and uh, i am extremely privileged to welcome him who was uh, who is actually working as a technical lead with the clinical and technology innovation division of colgate palmolive global technology and design campus located in new jersey dr hrabesh earned his bachelor's degree in applied electronics from the university of kerala in 1998 his masters in applied electronics from the university of bharathiyar in 2000 and his mphil in photonics from the international school of photonics at cochin university of science and technology in 2004 dr hrabesh received his phd degree in human sensing and functional sensor engineering in 2008 from yamagata university japan his current research activities involve development of novel clinical imaging technologies for fundamental and clinical research in space of oral and skin care applications leveraging machine learning deep learning and predictive modeling to improve clinical image and healthcare data and many such similar areas he has authored more than 120 peer reviewed research articles and about 10 uh, uh, chapters in book he has 10 issued patents in the area of optical imaging personal care wearable sensors and uh, instrumental cosmetic devices dr hebesh was also a lead scientist at compact imaging incorporated Mountain View, California, and holds a joint research with National Biophotonics and Imaging Platform Ireland, where he led the development of MRO, multiple reference OCT, a low-cost OCT technology platform for POC applications. Before joining Colgate, Dr. Hebesh was an advanced fellow at MIT Madrid Vision Consortium in Spain. where he was working on portable and wearing oct technology with this brief introduction let me invite dr hebesh moli subhash for his uh, presentation on uh, uh, photonics in cosmetic research and digital health this may be uh, a, an interesting uh, talk as far as the young researchers in in the in the field of photonics are concerned over to you hrubesh thank you karasna sir uh, thank you for your kind introduction and thank you all for joining this event and it's with great pressure to rejoining with all the aspirants after a long time uh, as i mentioned i works with colgate family so i think that i don't need to introduce you to colgate i hope some of might be uh, used some of our products this morning as a daily routine or <laughs> so so anyhow i will go with uh, so colgate is one of the number one brand in oral care so we have around more than 16 subsidiaries around the world so in different brand names i think that in india we we are familiar with only the colgate and pamaliv uh, so we uh, sorry so we have a uh, uh, various diverse segments so oral care is our primary big segment so we have uh, in oral care category we have toothpaste power toothbrushes mouthwash so various type of toothpaste for uh, whitening gingivitis our uh, cavity protection and uh, we do have a personal care division so we have wide range of uh, uh, products for a uh, uh, personal care uh, space including bar soaps shower gels and um, uh, uh, various uh, uh, yeah various cosmetic cosmetic uh, 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 cosmetic products in the oral uh, personal care space we do have uh, uh, another segment is the home care uh, so it's mainly 
uh, the products compromising uh, dish uh, dishwashers detergents household cleaners uh, and fabric conditioners uh, those type of stuff and another one is the pet and pet nutrition division that is called hill that is another big high profit segment it operates north america japan and some U european countries and uh, we do have a, a cosmetic division so this is pretty new so we recently acquired a couple of uh, high end cosmetic brands like pca skin that is uh, um um in office uh, a skin a skincare brands mainly focused on chemical peeling uh, they do have uh, segments for uh, uh, at home use uh, mainly moisturizers uh, serums cleansers toners uh, collagen hydrators and another one is the the Alltime D that is uh, mainly for a uh, sun protection creams and uh, and and uh, another one is the Filogra so that is a uh, Uh, another high end cosmetic brand actually uh, that uh, 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 that is mainly focused on anti aging technologies based on mesotherapy uh, technologies and so another uh, latest division is the connected uh, health segment so we have a wide range of uh, uh, power toothbrush connected toothbrush for um, uh oral care uh, application and some of the instrumental cosmetic devices like uh, uh, home based whitening so i'll give a brief overview of why we uh, do uh imaging technologies for supporting these products so Uh, so actually we are currently located uh, at uh, the global technology innovation center which is located in in piscataway it's in central new jersey it's nearly uh, around 50 miles from uh, new york so it is one of the biggest facility in north america so um, so this is the aerial view of our, our research center so we have around more than Twelve hundred people works in this facility. So, so oh, actually, I work mainly in the field of advanced imaging, and uh, so advanced imaging is very important for um, uh, various aspect of the product design, especially understanding the uh, the. Um, the efficacy of the product and understanding uh uh in ingredient distribution when you develop a product and uh, uh, uh and uh, the targeted application there are different platforms like uh, anti aging anti perspirant skin color instrumental cosmetic devices and pigmentation so so it is very important to to have a very sophisticated imaging facility to to understand uh the targeted application in various aspects so so in our facility we we can do uh, or we can study systems in molecular level or cell level a tissue or body level so we use various type of advanced imaging technologies for example air from tem sem so those are mainly for uh, uh, in vitro and uh, ex vivo type of imaging applications is to understand the uh, the cellular morphology and the ingredient distribution uh, inside uh, specifically for uh, um uh, ex vivo uh, skin models and uh, we use uh, other technologies like uh, in vivo the, those are confocal multiphoron uh, flame uh, second harmonics and cars and ocd uh, and uh, those are uh, higher resolution uh, 
uh, small field of view type of imaging systems. Uh, and uh, we do have uh, other systems, uh, body level imaging that include uh, multispectral imaging systems, thermal imaging and 3D optical imaging technologies for, uh, those are mainly used for uh, product efficacy studies and supporting new claims for various type of products. Uh, so I will cover um, uh, some of the, the imaging technologies we use uses in cosmetic research. So which include, uh, we use optical spectrometers in different configurations. Uh, one is uh, in colorometric, especially for, uh, so we have products that is for um, uh, tooth whitening and for uh, uh, skin toners, that is for a skin color measurement. And uh, uh, spectrometer is also used for uh, studying reflectance of the skin to understand the scattering properties and for uh, understanding spectroscopic features like uh, oxygenated and deoxygenated hemoglobin, melanin, and uh, uh, those type of uh, uh, chromophores. And fluorescence is another mode that's mainly used for uh, uh, understanding porphyrin in the skin and also for um, um, uh, oral applications, uh, specifically for a uh, plaque detection. Uh, because uh, the plaque give you uh, anaerobic, plaque is, or a biofilm is, uh, uh, it, it's contain a lot of anaerobic bacteria, so, and it, it has endogenous fluorescence. Uh, so we can use uh, optical spectrometers for uh, uh, quantifying them. Uh, so, so we have some devices we built in collaboration with some external partners. Uh, so we can use that in clinical scenarios. And um, uh, so we uh, uh, we have a range of uh, optical devices. So I will cover some of the, 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 uh, the widely used techniques in supporting our business. So the 3D optical imaging is uh, recently, it's surging. Uh, uh, previously, this, these are pretty expensive technology, but because of the latest uh, development in time of flight cameras and other cheap uh, uh, 3D cameras, this technology is getting pretty cheaper. So the 3D optical imaging widely used in, in intraoral imaging, uh, specifically for uh, reconstruction of the intraoral um, cavity. Uh, uh, it's mainly used for orthodontics application for uh, uh, cosmetic dentistry, for uh, making crowns, prosthetic devices, um, and another area is uh, 3D imaging is used in facial imaging. So, so we use some of this uh, 3D imaging technologies for uh, supporting our clinical uh, research. Uh, I will start with uh, the uh, 3D intraoral uh, cameras, um, scanners that is used for a uh, um, uh, uh, intraoral imaging. Uh, actually, these are uh, mainly developed for uh, uh, orthodontal uh, applications. The first generation systems gives only the, the topographic information. Actually, these are uh, based on various technologies like triangulation, uh, some systems based on active wavefront sampling, and um, some uses parallel confocal technology and studio photogrammetry, that is another technology. So I used one of this uh, technology called a parallel confocal. So that is from three shape system. So that is uh, one of the fastest uh, scanner. So it can give you both uh, color and uh, topographic information. So, so this is the the system, so typically it is used in dental office uh, for uh, uh, um, a restoration uh, or cosmetic uh, uh, implantation. 
applications. Uh, but uh, we start using this device as a diagnostic tool because uh, this can give you pretty high resolution topographic information as well as color information. So the topographic information we can use for uh, measuring topographic changes of the gum. For example, if you have gingivitis of, or any sort of uh, intraoral condition, your gum topography changes. So we can track that. For example, you can take the, this topographic image and uh, there are a lot of algorithms out there. Uh, it's some, some of the algorithms is called uh, iterative cross loop algorithm. So that, that is used for uh, 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 detecting the changes of topography. So actually uh, you need to capture one topographic image and another after some time point, and you can overlay one over the other and you can measure the inter, uh, in, uh, the inter mesh distance. Uh, so that can provide the height difference of these two. So actually that is a, a measure of relative volume change so we can use that for uh, mapping uh, uh, any sort of uh, gum changes or, uh, uh, or formation of plaque. Uh, and uh, so this is the, the latest uh, uh, three ship uh, trios for actually, this is a, a 3D scanner. It give you multiple information like it, it give you a true color image uh, it can provide fluorescence uh, mode operation and also a near infrared uh, mode. So actually these are some of the regular scanner with the white light. And so it, it does uh, a dual scan mode that right? excite the targeted tissue with the white light and alternatively it changes between white and blue light uh, and it captures both white light and uh, fluorescence. So specifically, you can get uh, two type of fluorescence from a dental tissue uh, because uh, the enamel is highly fluorescent because the, the, the key components of the enamel, that is the hydro, hydroxyapatite. So it can provide green fluorescence if you excite with blue light. So if there is a caries or uh, any sort of uh, enamel uh, condition, so it can give you a reduction in uh, enamel, uh, the fluorescent intensity. So that is a measure of uh, uh, enamel health. So it's a, it's a very uh, well-established well method. It's called a quantitative light fluorescent uh, techniques. So it is so actually they incorporated uh, that technique uh, in this scanner, and um, uh, it can uh, provide uh, uh, overlay of uh, this fluorescence on the uh, regular scan uh, to to uh, highlight where the caries are located. Likewise, it can also provide uh, red fluorescence. Uh, that is the fluorescence coming from the biofilm. Uh, so, so it can detect both uh, uh, fluorescence from biofilm. So it can detect, it can detect biofilm and, and caries. And another uh, mode is the near infrared imaging mode. Actually, that is mainly used for detecting the proximal caries. That is very difficult to because this is a only a topographic image. It won't give you any sort of depth of soil information. So, um, so this uh, near infrared, so for example, here you can see the, the contrast difference. Actually, this is a uh, interproximal carry. So, the, so it's a powerful tool. Actually, it is uh, then it's used it's for a CAD CAM, but uh, now they enhance the capability with this or multi-mode or diagnostic uh, capability. So you can use this as a pretty nice diagnostic tool. So we start leveraging uh, this system in, in various ways. Uh, I, I, unfortunately, I won't able to, uh, to, to show any case studies uh, because uh, those are really confidential. So, so these are uh, some examples uh, of uh, how we can 
image uh, plaque thickness using this method. So actually this is uh, a study with uh, before uh, uh, oral hygiene abstinence. And this is after actually you can uh, abstain the, the oral hygiene using some sort of retractor. And uh, so in this case, this, the subject is going to build a lot of biofilm and uh, that can cause uh, gingival inflammation or gingivitis. So then you overlay this base image with this image uh, and use that algorithm. So it can give you a color map of height difference. So for example, the green, this one shows the, the, the uh, inflamed or thick areas. So that is a quantitative measure. Actually they claim that they can measure up to five microns, but uh, that's not true actually. Uh, I, I, I did some gold standard studies and I found that the maximum height uh, it can detect is around uh, 40 to 50 microns. Uh, so this is one of the techniques we currently exploring. So it can be used for both hard and soft tissue studies. Uh, so another one is uh, 3D imaging uh, is for facial imaging. So we have this uh, system. This is a company based in California. So they make this, uh, it's a type of uh, four channel photogrammetric system. So it has seven cameras. So it can reconstruct the entire herd uh, in a snapshot. Uh, so it, uh, this uh, ender uh, 3D image consists of both the mesh data, 3D mesh data plus texture. So we yeah, we have algorithm to extract the textual information and we can do very quantitative analysis of uh, uh, wrinkles, uh, eye bags, cross feet, and any sort of uh, facial morphological changes. Typically we use this type of system for a tracking change in, in, in wrinkles or, uh, and uh, the texture we can use uh, we can extract various features like uh, the skin texture, pores, the skin color. Actually, this system, it has, uh, the, the one of the problem with this system is uh, the, uh, the cameras are not calibrated. So we cannot do uh, colorometric measurement with the system. So that is pretty challenging because it doesn't have a uh, control for the ex camera exposure. So currently they're working on uh, on coming with a new SDK with that features. So eventually uh, we hope we could use uh, colorometric measurement with this uh, 3D system. So this is uh, the 3D mesh and this is uh, the texture actually it is uh, saved in, in PLY point cloud format. So then we use some sort of algorithm to, to unwrap the, the texture. So then it, then the 2D texture became a uh, 3D uh, texture became a 2D uh, texture. So once you unwrap, it is called uh, conformal mapping. So when you once you change from 3D to 2D, there is a lot of noise. So uh, that is so you need to come up with a very sophisticated conformal mapping algorithm to correct those geometrical because uh, uh, you know the phase is a very complex structure. So you cannot simply uh, and wrap a uh, 3D with 2D, so there is a lot of uh, noise. So, so, uh, so we we need to come up with very sophisticated and wrapping algorithms uh, to correct this uh, uh, special artifacts. So that is one of the area we are currently working on. So another uh, technology we are currently exploring is uh, as a multispectral. Or uh, snapshot of frequency domain imaging. So, so this is a very quantitative type. Of, actually, it's a pretty new technology. It was first uh, devised in the University of uh, California um, in Irving. Uh, so, actually, we use a, a, a pattern, a fringe pattern, with varying uh, frequency. So we can get a quantitative information about skin scattering and absorption properties. So we use a, a multi-illumination. So we have a fringe, so we, we have a integrated a projector. Uh, the projector uh, projects these uh, patterns. 
and uh, we do have a, a another uh, white light uh, excitation and integrated blue light so uh, so this can do a one shot it can do multiple uh, 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 multi model uh, imaging so so we do white light imaging actually white light uh, we can extract color information especially if when you do uh, colorometric studies for example we have whitening uh, toothpaste or whitening products for a dental application so we wanted to see how the the, the dental shape changes so so we we can use the system for oral applications so one one it is using the system for quantifying the the the, the teeth color, um, and uh, another uh, we just start exploring how we can use the scattering co coefficient and uh, absorption coefficient for extracting new information. For example, so this subject uh, it has it has a it's an implant, so. In the normal image, you cannot distinguish. Actually, it looks uh, everything alike. But if you take the scattering, it give you a very uh, distinct uh, texture contrast. So we can. So this is a simple example. And likewise, so this is the the red and green fluorescence. So so the implant it, it doesn't provide any uh, any fluorescence. So, but all the other uh, kids provide high fluorescence. And this is uh, how we can extract uh, spectroscopic information, blood concentration, oxygen saturation. Uh, so uh, this, is, uh, this is a simple uh, uh, optical configuration. We can uh, change the oral, oral to facial imaging, the same system. So we can extract all the same parameters uh, that is uh, essential for uh, skin research. So, the oxygen, skin oxygenation, uh, blood content, melanin, skin color, uh, absorption, scattering. So we can we can also extract uh, 3D topography um, using uh, uh, the same because it's a fringe projection. So you can use the uh, uh, three or four step face tipping algorithm to extract the, the topographic information. So that is uh, uh, very interesting. If you, if you can extract the topographic information, you can correct the fluence and you can get very precise quantitative type of uh, uh, application. So actually this is a, this camera is very interesting. Actually this is a, a it's called a snapshot uh, spectral camera. This is a camera with 16 channels. So actually this is uh, manufactured by a company based in, uh, in Belgium. So, so I have two cameras. One camera operates in the visible range from four, 450 nanometer to six, 650 nanometer and another one is 650 to 980. So actually visible ba bands are actually, these are pretty com complex. Uh, <laughs> Uh, processing. Uh, the camera is very simple. Actually, this camera comes with the, 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 each pixels are uh, uh, fabricated with a very specific uh, uh, interference filters. Uh, so, so this in interference filters are uh, uh, very narrow band. Uh, so if the light collimates uh, perpendicular to the surface, but uh, typically when you put an optics, then the NA determines the angulation. So, so if you use a very high NA, the, the problem with this type of filters, so there are very leaky filters. So those are optimized for a, a, a very specific angle. So, so typically this is very hard to, to calibrate these cameras. So, so we calibrated, so we bought this camera. It took around two years to calibrate this camera so for uh, two different uh, numerical approaches. Uh, and uh, actually the company provided the calibration, it won't work. So, you need, so we developed our own algorithm for calibrating, but it works pretty fine now. Uh, 
So another area we uh, uh, so we have a uh, products with uh, uh, sun production, uh, UV production creams uh, for optimizing that. Uh, we developed a platform that is a ultraviolet imaging. Actually, that image the absorption. It's the absorption mode imaging. So it's a white light image, and uh, so typically the sun creams are uh, are developed for. Uh, Filtering uh, UVB rays that is uh, around uh, 300 to 400 uh, nanometer range. So actually, this is the, the UV uh, image. So if you use the UV image, you can quantify sun damage, bruises, pigmentation, uh, freckles. So, so this is uh, another way to, to study the efficacy of uh, sunscreens. So, for example, this is after sunscreen, after you can clearly see that it is fully absorbed. Uh, so, so we use uh, this UV for um, our various type of clinical research for testing uh, sunscreens. Uh, So moving to the other, uh, so we, other is this technology we are using is uh, optical coherence tomography. So we developed a, a, a multimodal of functional OCD system. Uh, so it, it is it, it is based on um, on uh, vertical cavity surface medium vessel pixel technology. So it's a very fast scanning system, uh, two hundred. Kilohertz OCT, so we uh, we can we use the system for uh, uh, studying both um, or hard and soft tissues. So we can extract; uh, it can provide high resolution 3D images. Uh, so we can get texture, uh, 3D morphology, and uh, we developed algorithm for extracting a relative volume change uh, because uh, most of our studies are like uh, longitudinal studies. So we, uh, there is a baseline and you apply uh, this product to the panelist and we monitor over time. So, so we need to develop this uh, clinical interface in a very sophisticated way uh, to, to, to meet all the requirements for a longitudinal uh, clinical study. So, so the system can provide angiographic information and it can also provide the 3D uh, volumetric quantification of biofilm. So we do have a fluoros a fluorescence more integrated with the system. So I can show you some of the, so actually we have multiple publications and actually yeah, this is, uh, so we have four publications on, based on this technology. Actually we are one of the first uh, uh, developing this high speed uh, uh, OCT for gingival imaging application. So, this is the, the 3D OCT image of the gingiva. So, you can see. So, what you are seeing, this is a, a co registered image of both structure and function, uh, functional image. You can see angiographic. Uh, information. So we use very sophisticated algorithm to extract blood, blood vessels from this uh, OCT images. And we do have higher resolution structural images. So we fuse these two images to, to generate this type of uh, uh, morphological and functional uh, information. So OCT is uh, typically can provide uh, structural information and uh, using various type of angiographic uh, algorithms uh, we developed. So, so it can give you, this is the, the, the this is a, a color coded uh, maximum intensity projection image. Uh, the, the, uh, the blue means uh, it is uh, deep inside and the red means uh, it is uh, very superficial uh, uh, blood vessels. So it maps uh, around uh, uh, up to up to 800 micrometer uh, beneath the skin. It can image uh, blood vessels. So, so in the structural imaging mode, uh, OCT can be used for uh, uh, both uh, soft and hot tissue application. So you can study gingival morphology and um, can be used for. Uh, Detecting various type of oral malignancies, 
and for heart tissue application, uh, the structural OCT can be used for detecting caries, erosion, and biofilms. Uh, and angiographic model is mainly for soft tissue. So, so we can uh, get volumetric information of microcirculation, and uh, that is very important to understand uh, gingivitis and other type of oral conditions. Uh, so we can uh, come up with various type of new indices based on this new technology. So actually developing the clinical interface for this, uh, it, it's, uh, it's pretty challenging because uh, when you do angiographic OCT unit, where the system should be very stable, even though it's, a, it's one of the fastest uh, uh, system currently available in the market. Uh, but um, uh, one of the challenges to fix the subject, so we use uh, a bite piece and you need to expose your, actually this extra oral imaging setup. So you currently we can image only on the front side of the, uh, the gingiva. Um, so this is the, the, the imaging setup. So we can show you some of the structural images. So for example, this is a case study of a subject. So this is the base image taken. Um, so this is the, the, the cross section, the horizontal direction. So actually this is the enamel. And what you are seeing this uh, uh, hyper reflecting, those are the biofilms. So you can quantitatively measure this thickness and you can measure the, the, the volume of how much biofilm is present on the mouth. Actually, this is the base image after we use one of our product that is um, plaque reduction uh, toothpaste. Uh, so after that, uh, so, so this one is uh, in, the, in the vertical direction. So you can see this is the gingiva, this is the heart, this is the enamel. And you can see the plaque thickness is a pretty thick plaque. It's around uh, nearly 100 micron thickness. Uh, so after using the toothpaste for a week, uh, we imaged, you can see that the plaque is completely gone. And uh, this is uh, only some residual plaques in the, the sulcus area. So this is a, just a case study, just to show how, how powerful is this technique for a quantifying plaque. And another application is uh, uh, the structural OCD is to, to quantify or detect erosion and lesions. For example, this is a sound enamel. And uh, so, so these are done in, in ex vivo. Uh, uh, to, so we do a lot of ex vivo studies. We have models for uh, erosion and lesions. So we use OCT for ex vivo studies. And um, so, so this one is uh, in vivo uh, uh, erosion. So this is, we masked this certain area of the, the enamel and uh, use some sort of uh, toothpaste with a, uh, a high uh, phosphor, uh, hydrogen peroxide to, to expose um, the erosion. Uh, so you can see the hyper-reflecting area. So that is, uh, so we can use OCT for uh, uh, quantifying demineralization or erosion or relations. So, so this uh, example is shows uh, this is the base. Uh, 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 you are exposing a sample. Uh, uh, this is a phosphoric acid exposed to a different uh, duration. So if you expose more duration, you have a lot of demineralization. So if you have de more demineralization, you have high scattering. So scattering, that's what you see very bright area here. So we, have, we can quantify this uh, hyperreflecting area. So this is uh, uh, another example of how we can use OCG for uh, uh, detecting erosion, demineralization. And this is another case study of in vivo subject, how we can use OCT for uh, monitoring the effectiveness of fillings or dental fillings. Actually, it is very important to have filling. The filling should be without any gap. If you have gap in the filling, 
and uh, in the time being it's going to be a problem means uh, that if uh, uh, saliva or can diffuse in through the end if uh, biofilm form forms here then it can cause secondary uh, uh, artifacts so so this is showing some example uh, so this is a failed carry so actually there is a gap so when you do when the dentist do this actually currently there is no method to 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 to, to verify whether uh, they're doing in the right way if there is any sort of uh, issues so we can use OCD uh, as the guiding tool for uh, when you do the, the dental fillings. So this is some of the structural images coming from the soft tissue. So this is a subject with the uh, gingivitis. Um, so we can see uh, in, in the tissue, this is the gingival tissue. Actually, this is the, uh, this, uh, the, the coronal cross section. So you can see some sort of uh, uh, fluid pockets. Actually, if you have gingivitis, you, there is a fluid buildup. So, so this is the baseline. So we, we in a study, we use some sort of uh, tooth, toothpaste with actives. Uh, so and I, I, I don't disclose the, the, the actives here. So actually those are confidential things. So after uh, uh, using, uh, th these are uh, some of the proof of concept studies and pilot studies with the product. So after that, you can see uh, after three weeks, the, the, we scanned the same area. So it's completely gone. So it's become normal. So here you can see a lot of uh, fluid pockets. So all those have disappeared after. So, so th this is a very interesting uh, application of how we can also to use for a sub uh, surface morphological changes, we can quantify this type of, so we have algorithms for quantifying that. And this is another example of uh, how we can use OCD for uh, measuring gingival abscess. And um, so these are uh, some of the uh, structural images of gingiva. So, so this is the, the cross-section, B cross-sectional image, and this is the emphasis image. So you can see the, the typically gingiva having three areas. Uh, it's the marginal gingiva that is close to the, the, the tooth and gingival interface, and attached to gingiva and the alveolar. Actually, the, the texture is, uh, you can see it's very distinct for alveolar attached and so OCD can actually, if you have any sort of a gingival condition of morphological changes, this texture changes. Uh, so we uh, we are currently developing a sophisticated algorithms, texture algorithms that can map this type of changes and that we can relate to to, to early st stage detection of uh, gingivitis or oral conditions. So this is another uh, application of uh, OCD structural image. It's for uh, uh, how we can quantify the gingival thickness. Actually, that is a little bit challenging problem because uh, one of the main drawback of OCD is so, you know, the imaging depth is only one millimeter. Actually, if uh, there are uh, three types of gingiva, people with a thin and medium and thick type of uh, 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 gingival biotype. Actually, OCD is pretty good for a thin type, but if it is a thick type, it's pretty hard to, to quantify this. So actually, we come up with some method to how we can estimate the gingival thickness based on the, 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 the orientation or orientation of the, the, the heart tissue or the, the tooth. So, so actually we uh, developed an algorithm based on uh, relative thickness measurement. Actually, we take the topography and we overlay, for example, this is a normal and this is a used to gingivitis case. Then we can overlay. The, it's pretty much similar to the, 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 the STL topographic measurement I mentioned uh, earlier. So we are applying the same type of algorithm here. Uh, to, to monitor the volumetric changes. So we can um, 
use that for a volumetric changes of uh, gingiva. Actually, this is uh, the cross section of uh, normal gingiva and gingiva with gingivitis. So you can see uh, the gingivitis having a lot of hyper reflectivity. And uh, so this is because of there is angiogenesis and there is a lot of blood act activities going on here. So this is the NFAS image taken at a depth of around 350 micrometer beneath the gingival skin. And um, so somebody raised a question, so you can ask me. Ravesh, you can you can you can continue. We will we will have a, a question and answer okay, session. Okay. 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 Yeah. So so this is um, actually um, so we have this. Uh, uh, we developed a various type. Actually, we published a couple of papers based on how we can use this texture and topographic information for assessment of uh, various gingival conditions. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't link to those papers here. And uh, another area we are exploring is uh, OCD and geography for gingivitis. For example, uh, this is the cross sectional same view of the gingiva. This is a normal subject. So here you can see the uh, gingival uh, and geographic morphology of uh, marginal gingiva is the attached to gingiva and the alveolar gingiva. So the, 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 the morphological architecture is very different. And uh, uh, so this is uh, one of the first image uh, of angiography doing on Geneva, the first time report. So we, this we published in 2018 and it's comes to the front page of uh, Java Biophotons. So this is a, uh, the cross-sectional image and enforced image of uh, angiography. So it's a normal subject. So you can clearly see the capillaries. This is the cross-sectional view. And this is a subject with gingivitis. You can see enhance the blood activities. Actually, this is because of angiogenesis. So if you have gingivitis, you have neovascularization and you have more high dense uh, capillaries here. So, so we developed, uh, actually we just uh, uh, submitted a couple of papers uh, uh, recently uh, based on a clinical study. So actually, so we, uh, from this angiogram, we can come up with a lot of new indices uh, like uh, blood volume. We can quantify in, in, in 3D. And we can estimate vessel density, vessel area, skeleton, perimeter, vessel complexity. So we have a, a paper is coming pretty soon based on a clinical study. Uh, we, uh, uh, did an induced gingivitis study on around uh, 15 subjects. So it's a it's a, uh, it's a six week study. So we induced gingivitis uh, subjects. Some there is a, a population uh, uh, normal subjects and uh, half po population. that we are a, a retainer and they're abstained from brushing for um, the end of time. So they are going to, to, to induce gingivitis and uh, we, we try to quantify the, uh, this type of parameters based on that study. So this is, um, uh, uh, this is the, the same system. So as I mentioned that we, it's an integrated system with fluorescence imaging so we can get uh, this is the original image. Actually, this is uh, we have some issues with the, the camera, so that's why it looks a little bit weird. So this is uh, before uh, brushing, and uh, this is after brushing. So, so actually, this is abstained for uh, uh, two days, uh, uh, not doing brushing. So it's going to build up plaque. So you can see the biofilm here. So this is the fluorescent mode image. So this is the corresponding OCT image. Um, so we can see the plaque give you very hyper reflecting uh, signal. So we can quantify, actually this is a one and fast cross section. 
So we can go through multiple steps to, 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 to quantify, we can volumetrically quantify the how much pack is there. So for example, if you apply a product, and we claim that, oh, it's going to, to give this much percentage of pack reduction. So typically it's very hard to do, but uh, using OCT we can do very precisely how much pack is removed using the that formulation. So this is a, another uh, powerful application of OCD. So another uh, another imaging technology we are using is the confocal laser scanning. So actually, this is a, a spinning disk, uh, an icon microscope. We use this mainly for a very fundamental research, specifically for studying microbial uh, flora. And uh, typically we use uh, how the, the, for example, this is a uh, example of uh, human cheek cell when it interact with bacteria, how, the, how it affects the morphology, it's, you know, it's become, the cell become unhealthy. So then we use some sort of uh, antibacterial technology to kill the bacteria and see whether the cells are getting better. So those type of, unfortunately, I, I cannot be able to show any of the case studies, all those are confidential. So, and uh, this is another longitudinal biofilm because uh, we are a water care company. We, we work mainly on biofilms, biofilm production. So, so we do a lot of uh, longitudinal institute studies on biofilms. So, we have uh, we use this uh, this type of system very extensively for uh, biofilm research and also we use this system for fingerprinting various type of bio bacteria so we can uh, target bacteria based on various type of probes uh, because some bacteria are um, bad and some are uh, good for the health. So how do you fingerprint those type of bacteria? So we have very sophisticated technology for uh, uh, fingerprinting various type of bacteria. And so oh, we use uh, the confocal system for studying bacterial research. Another uh, area is uh, uh, studying a tubular, dental tubular, because um, uh, so the tubules, uh, if you have the sensitivity problem, that is you have exposed uh, tubules. For example, uh, this is a simple cartoon of uh, how the inflammation causes gingival recession. So then your uh, gingiva is going to expose to, to the tubules, the hot tissue tubules. Actually tubules, there are a lot of uh, nerve endings so when you drink cold or hot, or if, if interact with air, these uh, nerve endings are going to stimulate and that causes the sensitivity problem. So how to, so we come up with a very sophisticated uh, technology for uh, uh, uploading this, um, this dental tube, tubule. So actually Colgate, uh, it's called a CSPR. So we use, uh, that is called get uh, sensitivity pro activation product. Actually, that is uh, one of the, um, the leading sensi uh, sensitivity product. So if you use that product, it's going to occlude your uh, uh, dental tubules. So actually it uses a, a protein in your uh, saliva, it's called arginine, arginine, and uh, one of the calcium in the product that uh, generate a, a, a complex. So it is a positively charged complex that uh, actually the dental tubules are electrically negatively charged. So, so that's going to be electrostatically attracted and that give you better occlusion and production. So, so we use, actually we generated these images with confocal images. These are uh, confocal reflectance images. Uh, so actually this is not in vivo because it's very hard to do in vivo. So actually these are, uh, this is a, just a demo. 
Uh, so we we do these experiments in 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 vitro. On so this is some of the example, the reflection mode, and this is the fluorescent mode. So we can see that. So actually, this is the dendral tubules. This is the uh, the uh, electron microscope image. You can see it is completely filled uh, using the CSPR technology. So you don't have your nerve endings are exposed. So. So then it's used, uh, typically you have to occlude, then you need to, to come up with uh, a acid challenge. And then you need to quantify this uh, tubule, exposed to tubules, so you can quantify. Uh, so, you, so we have a very sophisticated algorithm for quantifying the, the, the occlude uh, tubules. So we use uh, confocal for that type of studies. So we do have a profilometry, optical pro profilometry systems that is mainly for studying the surface topography of uh, enamel blocks. Uh, once you do uh, erosion or a re remineralization technology, uh, then we can measure the topography. For example, this is an um, uh, area of um, uh, not exposed to erosion. And this is exposed to erosion for two seconds and five seconds. Actually here you can see the topographic changes. Actually this is, uh, uh, this is the topographic changes in microns. Actually this is a very sophisticated phase-based uh, uh, profilometric system. So we use this for uh, ex vivo studies, uh, not for in vivo. You cannot use this system for in vivo. So we do have a confocal for in vivo application. You mainly use for studying skin morphology, especially for understanding product efficacy uh, uh, in uh, proof of concept clinical study. So we have this uh, calibrary vivoscope system. This is a pretty expensive system. This is one of the one and only one uh, in vivo confocal reflectance microscope. So it can give you uh, up to two, 200 to 300 micrometer uh, uh, within the skin with pretty high resolution. So we use this for uh, uh, various type of, uh, to study skin morphology, uh, various conditions. So we use this with uh, uh, a lot of um, cost, uh, cosmetic, therapeutic studies and lesser instrumental uh, uh, instrument, uh, instrumental cosmetic devices, uh, how it changes the, the morphology of the skin. So typically the, 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 uh, the confocal system, it, one of the drawback is it can give very limited shallow depth, maximum maybe 200 micrometers. So, but uh, give you very high resolution. This is the stratum corneum. So you can see the keratinocytes. So that is um, up to, 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 to 20 to 30 micrometer in dimensions. And actually here you, you, you can see the vessel cells. So, yeah, so here it shows where, where the, the the infus plane is located, and this is the corresponding. So one of our key area is to, to, to image collagen because uh, we work on various type of anti-aging technologies. So that is uh, mainly for uh, stimulating the collagen and fibroblasts. So, but uh, one of the big challenge with uh, this in vivo uh, confocal imaging, it works with certain people, but as people with a thick uh, uh, Epidermal, um, it's very hard to, to image collagen. Um, so, so these are some of the, the uh, images captured with people with a different skin condition. So yeah, I think that I'm running out of it. Just, uh, so we do have a, a, a recently have a, a multi a photon microscope. This is uh, it's from GenLab. So this is a pretty expensive system. It's cost around a half million. So we use that for various type of uh, applications. So I think that I'm going to say I'll, uh, I'll move to some instrumental cosmetic. Uh,
the uh, so one of the area we are working is developing next generation uh, connected health devices for both oral and skin care applications. So, so as you look in the digital and connected health area, there is a lot of key players like big companies, tech companies. So, and uh, they come up with a wide range of products like uh, you can have uh, smart devices uh, in, integrated with all uh, sort of applications. So, so currently we are interested in how we can leverage this type of uh, new technologies in the oral care space. So, so we, uh, one of the area we are currently, we launched a product actually, this is a wearable uh, blue light uh, whitening device. So actually this is uh, launched last year. Um, uh, so actually we use uh, one of the latest, um, uh, uh, it's a dot printed blue LED. So actually, most of our competitors they use uh, one or two uh, LEDs. So actually, this is a, the, the problem with that. Uh, it, it cannot give you the, uh, the uniform illumination. So using this uh, dot printed, actually, we have uh, hundreds of uh, um, micro LEDs printed on on this uh, surface. Uh, actually, this is. Uh, the principle of this is actually we use a hydrogen peroxide for whitening. So you, so the hydrogen peroxide, it's the reaction is like an endothermic reaction. So you, if you, uh, if you, or you can uh, use light as a catalyst to to enhance the reaction. So, so uh, the people uses uh, blue light to enhance the reaction. So, so. Uh, Typically, it may take 30 minutes to get a good uh, whitening uh, profile. So, so using our new technology because of this uniform illumination, so our products actually need only 10 minutes for a 10 day. So this is the, the change you can observe from this color to this is a 10 day treatment. So this is... Uh, uh, actually, it is a instrumental cosmetic device, light activated. So we use the blue light to, to enhance the, the reaction. So the reaction is something like uh, the hydrogen peroxide. You know, the, the, the stains, uh, these are organic molecules. So, so hydrogen peroxide disintegrates and it uh, generates radicals. The free radicals are going to uh, uh, disintegrate the, this organic big molecules into small molecules and uh, and the reaction we can <clears throat> accelerate it by uh, blue light excitation. So, so this device costs around $120 here. So if you, so typically when you do this in, in the in office, actually this is typically uh, done in the, the, clean, the dental office, those are very expensive. So another area currently I'm working our developing um, a toothbrush with integrated sensors actually. So we have, uh, uh, so I started building this uh, pretty long back and started in 2017 onwards. So we integrated the toothbrush with uh, uh, um, a tracking. It's, it's tracking is based on initial measurement sensors. So we have a nine axis, but we usually two, two uh, uh, Two devices, accelerometer. It's a six axis, and uh, using a very sophisticated algorithm, we can map the mouth. Uh, so how you are brushing, how well you are brushing. So you can uh, actually we can track the, the the orientation of the toothbrush inside your mouth. Uh, so we uh, develop this algorithm, and we do have a, another method. Uh, so we don't need any external pressure. We use the accelerometer as a pressure sensor, and you can get multiple information from your brushing. So, for example, it can track your brushing. It can monitor your uh, uh, brushing duration, how much pressure you apply to each quadrant or each section in, in your mouth. Um, and uh, we do integrated an uh, optical sensor. Um, so that the optical sensor can provide uh, uh, both oral soft and hard tissue information. 
So actually, we launched uh, the, the first version of the device. It's called Harm. So it's currently it is available in the U.S. market. So, so this is the uh, this is our flagship uh, connector. It's the third generation, so it's going to be the flagship model. Um, so the app looks like this. So you so we have the the three D monitor and it monitor your day to day brushing activity. So how much percentage you you covered in your mouth, how much duration you spent for brushing, whether you missed any area, so it, it indicated your area. So actually we use a very sophisticated machine learning approach for uh, uh, tracking. Uh, so we generated a, a very sophisticated generalized brushing model uh, using a, a, a deep learning approach. So, um, so so we can track, uh, also we have algorithms that can guide you how to brush. So, and um, so this is uh, currently available. Uh, so, so another thing currently I'm working uh, is to, to, to develop a, a toothbrush integrated with the tele dentistry platform. So actually, so we have uh, this uh, tracking toothbrush. So we integrated uh, optical sensor uh, so, um, so actually, this, this is a detachable head. So you can switch between a brush to a, 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 a indoor camera system. The same brushing. Uh, actually, this is an IoT device. Actually, it's it has an integrated DSP uh, position tracking. Everything is integrated inside. So, so when you do the brushing, it it, it has a dual mode operation. It's going to excite with a blue light and a white light. So you can uh, have, uh, uh, in the white light mode, you can detect your whiteness. If you have any strain, or um, if you have any sort of soft or hard tissue uh, or conditions, you can do tissue evaluation. And it can detect various conditions like uh, gum recession, damage, pigmentation, microblading, or uh, even you can do spectroscopy, some sort of actually. So we are building all these capabilities and uh, it do have a blue light excitation so it can provide information about plaque and uh, 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 there is plaque detection and QLF that is quantity light flow sense uh, that is for uh, detecting the, 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 the health of your uh, enamel. So we integrated all this. It's, it's currently under development. Actually, the, the, the toothbrush with the plaque detection. So we are launching this year, actually, this one actually. So last uh, 2020, we got the, the best innovation award from CES for this, uh, this technology. So this is the one and only one toothbrush with the integrated uh, optical technology. Uh, so when you do brushing, it detects if if you have a plaque, so it can indicate where the plaque. So you can brush more time there, and it uh, it updates every day. Uh, so it's a pretty cool technology. So so this is going to be our flagship uh, model for uh, next generation tele industry. So we are going to integrate this type of uh, technology for next generation. So it's a toothbrush with a diagnostic, so with a lot of functionalities. So this is another uh, toothbrush project we, we are working. Actually, this is also, uh, it's a tracking, it's a toothbrush with augmented reality. So this is for, uh, for kids, uh, actually. Uh, so here the tracking is done by uh, camera. So camera, we have a very sophisticated real-time tracking algorithm. So, so you can see this, uh, uh, the dots. So we track these dots and we can get the gesture of, actually the, the positional accuracy is not so great. For example, the, the hum toothbrush, uh, we have around 16 quadrants to, uh, to monitor here. But, uh, for this, uh, we have only five quadrants because it's pretty hard to get high resolution with uh, ex external uh, camera. So this is for a kid's uh, toothbrush. And finally, so we have all these uh, devices actually. 
uh, how do you manage all this data? So that is one of the biggest hurdles. So we have developed a very sophisticated um, it's under dollar and it's, it's a uh, we use AWS platform, Amazon Web Service Platform for uh, cloud-based computing and telemetrics. Actually, we have all these devices, uh, all our clinical devices, those are connected to uh, Edge connector app. Uh, so that uh, works in the host uh, uh, system. So that can transfer all this data directly. Actually, it, it's wherever some of the systems so when we do the clinical studies, uh, we have around more than 100 clinical centers around the world. So, so all these systems are going to generate um, uh, the data and it's automatically pushed into the AWS cloud. And uh, we have a very sophisticated, it's a very big project. It's currently going on. So, Dr. Habesh? Yeah. So that, yes. that's all. Actually, okay, this you, is the, you are summarized. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You are concluding. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, I think that I took a lot of time. So I didn't... <laughs> no, no, no. We, we, are, we, are, we are about to start our next session uh, in another 10 minutes. That's why I interrupted you. Oh, sure. So I'm sorry. So actually, yeah, I'm done. Yeah. Okay, so you, can you, any... you can conclude. You can conclude. Yeah, that's all. Actually, this uh, so we have, uh, we use all these technologies. And uh, so one of the biggest uh, hurdles is managing this clinical data. So actually, we generate one year. Uh, terabytes of data. So we need to handle that. We need to process. So we need to, to automate all the processing. So it's very essential for our, our us to, to develop this cloud-based uh, machine learning and uh, image processing. So it's, uh, it's a very big project currently going on. So that's all. So okay. I'm done. So if you have any questions, you can ask me. Uh, Rabesh, there are uh, uh, two questions. One is, is UV imaging method safe? That is one question. Oh, yeah. Actually, uh, typically, uh, we there is an ANSI limit for uh, UV exposure. And uh, we use very short pulse. It's not a continuous illumination. It's a very short pulse. So we have a, a, a xenon lamp. Um, so we generate the exposure for a very short time. So, and that is within the safety limit of ANSI maximum exposure MPE. So, uh, uh, and this, uh, the latest cameras are a very uh, high sensitive cameras. So you don't need a very high uh, exposure. Uh, so, so it's a very short pulse. Okay, another yeah. question. Uh, what is the maximum measurement distance? How ambient lights such as sunlight affected in image? In which condition? In the UV imaging? Or uh... how ambient light such as uh, sunlight affected in imaging? That is the question. What is the maximum measurement distance? Possibly that. Yes, the UV. Right. Sun, actually, most of our uh, these experiments are uh, uh, in a very controlled settings. So we don't. Uh, we don't uh, we don't have any uh, ambient ambient conditions, uh, 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 especially for uh, that we can correct. So typically, when you do, uh, you can you can turn on the light and you you can do experiment. You can turn off the light. So it depends upon how do you calibrate. So when you do the system calibration with ambient condition, you can you can do ambient condition. So, so most of our uh, experiments are um, in very controlled settings. So we have only the, the light we use for uh, uh, the experiment. For example, in a multispectral imaging system, so we have a controlled light source, only that's going to work. So no other source are operating at that moment. So, so there is no sunlight. All these are uh, doing inside, actually it's in a laboratory, laboratory condition. So we, we uh, we don't have any, yeah. and this uh, the distance actually that varies. For example, for um, the 3D uh, imaging, the working distance actually the photogrammetric uh, gammometric uh, set setups. Uh, so those are a couple of uh, centimeters, ten to 
uh, to uh, 15 centimeter, the, the, the subject and the imaging system. Um, uh, that is for the, the whole body imaging uh, system. Uh, so, but uh, other, it depends. So for example, the, the OCT system, the working distance is around 36 uh, millimeter, 3.6 centimeter. Uh, the subject that is the extra oral uh, imaging, so it's pretty close, and uh, so so we need to, to control the uh, infection. So that is very important for the clinical study. If one subject comes, you have to clean it, clean it up, and uh, we have infection control. Uh, so you use shields, like um, we have uh, covered with a very specific type of plastics. So that you can detach after the experiments. So, yeah, it's everything. Uh, yeah, these are done in a very controlled setup. Okay. So we there is a protocol for that when you do clinical studies. So, yeah. Uh, another question: uh, What is the major challenges in uh, implementing a low cost uh, OCT for this oral care? Because it's not so, not so popular in uh, in uh, oral care. Uh, yeah, actually, that uh, depends upon what you are looking because. Uh, you can configure OCT uh, for uh, different application, different specification. For example, in our application, we are really interested in 3D, 3D imaging, uh, and for angiographic applications. So, for that, we need a 200 kilohertz axial scan speed. Uh, the currently the highest. Uh, Commercially available is around 400 kilohertz. Actually, uh, this is the same system. Currently, we use only the forward chip. The reverse chip, we are currently not using. We can use the reverse chip, but we need to recalibrate the system. So th those, uh, the current system is pretty expensive. So we spend around 120K for, uh, uh, so you, you uh, for a 3D high resolution, and, and uh, one of the big challenges is the working distance. So, um, uh, so in, in our case, uh, uh, the the uh, we use the vertical cavity as uh, uh, vertical uh, visc 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 uh, light source. Actually, it has a very long working distance um, because when you do the imaging, the subject uh, the gum morphology is different, so it may varies. So you need to compensate that. So uh, the pixels are very expensive uh, currently. So if you want to, buy, uh, to build a pixel-based uh, long-range OCT system, you need to spend at least uh, 50,000 above. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So okay. if you, you can use a spectral okay. domain system, but uh, that's going to be a low cost, but uh, that that cannot meet some of the requirement of an or oral because oral is very challenging, not like skin. Skin is a, the surface is flat. So you can, uh, uh, you don't need any uh, curvature correction or, but oral is not like that. So you have the curvature. So when, so you can use the, the, the short uh, range OCTs, uh, the working distance, you need a long range, that's what I, uh, it depends what application, so it, uh, you, you can. Okay, yeah. Dr. Kribesh, there are a lot of questions, but uh, unfortunately we are unable to proceed with the questions. So, no uh, on, uh, so I can say, on you the, can send me the question, I can answer uh, okay, later. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, no problem. So, so, uh, uh, so on behalf of the International School of Photonics and the Organizing Committee, uh, let me thank Dr. Kribesh uh, for introducing us to a wide range of uh, techniques uh, under development and uh, many products which are used for oral care. And thank you very much, Fribesh. Uh, thank you once again. Thank you so much for uh, giving me this opportunity. Thank you, everybody. Well, so if you have any questions, you can reach me. So I think that you have my emails. I can answer any of your questions. Happy to answer if anyone wants to connect. and. Definitely. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you once again. Thank you. Bye. -bye. bye. Thank you, Khribir sir, for your informative lecture, and thank you, Kailasna sir, for chairing the session. Next, we have uh, contributed talks, and we will start within few minutes. Please stay logged in. <laughs> 